Welcome to this video tutorial on how to create a comic book style display mode in Rhino. Within Rhino we have a few different display modes that come set up with the software. These can be found on the kind of left hand side here under this little drop down arrow where we can choose between a rendered, a sort of x-ray mode, a technical mode and these are all different ways of viewing our basic model. Now also in addition to this we can actually create our own display modes if we want to create a custom viewport style for our object which we might want to take multiple images of or create drawings from. To do this we can click on that drop down arrow and go down to where it says display options here. This will open up our properties panel and if we click on the display modes tab you can see all the display modes we currently have in our Rhino file here. Now to create our own one we can either click on new or we can create a copy of an existing display mode and usually creating a copy of one is the best place to start. Now for this particular tutorial I'm going to be trying to make a kind of comic book very kind of graphic style display mode to view our model in. So to do that I'm going to start with the rendered viewport mode here and we're going to customize this to create our own style. So I'm going to click on that rendered mode and hit the copy button there and there we'll make a copy of the rendered mode and we can rename that if we want to or we can just keep it as its kind of current name there. Now to edit some of these settings we need to kind of open up that copy of the rendered mode and start to tweak some of these settings in here. But to start with what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click OK and now we've created that I'm going to go down find my copy of rendered which is here and just switch it on so I can see what it looks like. And as you can see, it just looks like the normal kind of rendered viewport mode. Now, in order to get that kind of graphic comic book style, there's a few settings I need to tweak in the lighting before I go and tweak my display mode settings. To do this, I'm going to go up to the render tab. I'm going to go to the current renderer and just make sure it's on the legacy version of the Rhino render. From there, I'm then going to go to the render properties, open up this and scroll down to the lighting panel and I'm going to turn the skylight off and turn the sun on and this will give me a kind of very strong contrasting light source from the sun which will give us that kind of graphic look we're going for like so and there you can see we've now got those sharp shadows now I'm going to go back into my display options and we're going to tweak a few settings in my kind of new display mode here which are then going to affect my model now as you can see we've got lots of settings to play around with in here. Now to start with I'm going to just make sure my shading settings I've got my shade objects on and we've got my flat shading also turned on. Now what you can also do is you can also override all of the materials and the colors in here to give everything a kind of stock look and this might be the case if you want to give it that very kind of sort of vivid black and white kind of contrasting style you might not want any materials showing up on this and what this could look like is it might be that we've sort of set up some materials in here and perhaps just as an example maybe we've got a kind of red material on one of the objects and let's say we've just set that on this piece here like so so you can kind of see that that's red but it might be that you actually don't want any materials and you want to override them and we can do that in our kind of display options as well. So if I go back to my copy of my rendered view, go down to the shading settings, and then for my kind of color and material usage, instead of rendering material, we can actually go for a single color for all objects. And I'm gonna set this to a white material, like so. And you can see there that completely overrides any of my colors or materials I have on. If I go back to the rendering material, you'll see that it shows up red, back to my single color and it will just overwrite it and that's what I want in this case I just want to overwrite any of those colors or materials I've got on for this particular display mode now also on here you can have kind of different things be visible in there I'm not going to change any of these for this because I want to keep it the same as it is in the rendered view and for the lighting I'm just going to stick with the scene lighting which will take that sunlight I've set up from there we can also start to edit other options in here I can click on my objects panel and under objects we can open up all of the objects in our scene and we have options for editing the points curves surfaces sub d etc now for mine i'm mostly my geometry here is made up of surfaces so i'm just going to click on the surfaces tab and i'm going to play around with the edge color on here you can see when my objects are in shadow because it's a kind of vivid very dark shadow i've got here i'm losing some of my objects to that shadow 
So what I can do is actually go in to the kind of edge color and I'm going to go single color for all edges and we're going to set this to a white color and this will allow this to sort of appear through my shadows. Now I'm going to put this thickness up to one pixel like so and there you can see now we've now got that kind of white line showing on all my objects which is a really nice way of just kind of highlighting some of the line work in there. You can dial this down if you don't want it as bright we could put it to a kind of grey but I think for this particular tutorial I'm going to set it as white. Now you can see here the thickness is controlled by the number of pixels we're giving that line and you can't have any less than one here and this is still looking quite thick but don't worry too much because when we capture this we can set the resolution to be a higher resolution which in turn will kind of decrease the thickness of the line so this kind of edge thickness all depends on how you output your final image the higher number of pixels in the final image the kind of thinner the lines will be in this case so we're going to keep that as one and we're going to keep these as they are as well. Now there's also some other settings we can kind of set if we have meshes or other objects in the scene we can set the kind of display options for those and we can also tweak the shadows here as well. So you can see we've got a kind of like shadow size and quality. You won't see too much difference in this but there is a slight kind of sharpness that comes when you kind of up the maximum shadows here compared to when it's down lower and it's a little bit when you see you don't want it all the way down but it's a bit blurry when you go down now if you're kind of doing um, final quality imagery you might want to set that up to the really sharp shadows but I wouldn't keep this at this level for the whole time because it might slow down your PC um, another useful thing here is we can change the shadow color so if you wanted to actually tint your shadows maybe you wanted them a kind of dark blue tone for example we could do that here as well and this can give it a nice kind of strong graphic style which might kind of go well with the particular style of imagery you're trying to produce. For this particular tutorial I'm going to keep it as a black shadow for now there. Now once we're happy with those those are kind of really the main settings we want to set and we're going to just hit OK to kind of finish that and you can see we're still in the viewport there so we can actually kind of roll around pick as many views as we want and those options will kind of stay the same for this particular display mode I have. Now in order to now capture this image how I'll do that is go down here and go to capture and we're going to capture to file so we don't have to render this out all we need to do is capture the viewport and this is where we spoke about the kind of resolution of the object now because my lines are set to be a one pixel thick line the higher the resolution the thinner those lines will be so if I set this to 5000 resolution and I'm going to lock it to the aspect ratio to keep it to the frame of my view here hit OK it will save that out as a JPEG and we'll just hit save there then I'm just going to open that up in my Photoshop file and you can see there the lines are nice and thin just as a kind of contrast and just to see the difference between them if we do the same thing and we're just going to capture this out again. This time let's put it down to 2000. Hit OK and save that. And then we'll open up this one. To make it a bit bigger. There. You can see the lines are a lot thicker. So depending on the kind of resolution you capture the view at, the thicknesses of the lines will change. So that was just a quick video tutorial on how to create a kind of comic book style display mode in Rhino. Using this technique you can create lots of different display modes with custom colours, custom material settings and custom line work to suit whatever kind of display or whatever kind of visuals you're looking to create within your scenes. I hope you found this video tutorial useful and if you want to watch any other videos on rendering or drawing in Rhino then please check out the videos on the channel. Thanks for watching.